Greetings, YouTube. It's been a while since I've made this video, and I don't know what it is about this week. I mentioned on one of my other videos that I was thinking about making an updated, uh, well, an updated video to this topic, and I received uh, quite a bit of positive feedback regarding uh, some of you and your desire to have me make the video. So I woke up this morning, and I said, no matter what I do today, I've got to make this video. <laughs> and so this is me doing what I promised myself I would do. I don't know if you've ever woken up and you just know there's this one thing on your to-do list that you've got to do and it almost reminds me of like writing an essay and you just you need to at least write that first paragraph to get started but writing those first few sentences just just feels like it's impossible. Uh, that's how sometimes it is to make YouTube videos but it's worth it when you actually make the content and uh, hopefully you will uh, agree with that after uh, well after you see the video. So what I love about the way that Kabam has structured the champion lists and that they've revamped it in the past year is that I used to have to go to like four stars to talk about this because uh, I had more champions, but now it tells you who you don't have. And so it makes it really easy, even if you don't have the six star champion, which of course six stars are still very difficult to get and getting great six stars can feel like it's impossible, especially for you free to play players out there, unfortunately. So uh, with that being said, we are going to go through and uh, talk about which six stars are worth taking to rank three. Because, make no mistake about it, we have seen some very questionable choices in the past few months, particularly since Cyber Weekend, in order to have you become Thronebreaker and to take advantage not only of those Cyber Weekend offers, but also of the Kabam Santa December 25th gift based on on progression. So let's start out with some obvious ones. Dr. Doom is is just a no-brainer when it comes to rank 3 status, and he does not need to be awakened to be at rank 3. He is certainly a huge MVP for those of you looking to even do one path of the abyss. Um, Guillotine 2099 is a champion that I don't regret taking to rank 3, but I don't really use her that much. I do love pairing her with Warlock, and we'll talk about him in a second. Um, if I had a choice between taking Guillotine 2099 up, and Prestige was not a factor, right? Uh, and Ghost, I would choose Ghost every time. If I had a choice between Guillotine 2099 and Warlock, I'd choose Warlock every time. But I didn't have Warlock um, when I took Guillotine 2099 up, and I also uh, still don't have Ghost Awaken. So hopefully, because it'll be several months before I do this video again. Hopefully, by the time I do the video next month, Ghost will be awakened. But at the time of recording this video, she obviously isn't. Speaking of Ghost, uh, a no-brainer again to rank three. I will say that you, you really need to practice your Ghost skills. And I say that knowing that if I had to grade my Ghost skills, even after having Ghost for a couple years, uh, I'd, I'd grade them like a C plus. They're just slightly above average, but they're still nothing close to what they need to be in order to clear content easily like so many of you watching this that are just so good with Ghost. Uh, Aegon, rank three, but only Awakened. I have seen some people who have just decided that Aegon is their best champion on paper, and even though he's not Awakened, and even though he may not be Awakened for Lord knows how long, you'd rather take him up as a long-term project, and I get that theory. So there needs to be discussion in this video about like long-term projects. Uh, some of you might be sick of hearing me say this, but uh, I call champions like Aegon puzzle piece champions because you really need three different pieces of the puzzle to form the overall champion. Getting the champion is just a third of the puzzle. Awakening that champion is the second third, and then a high SIG ability, which Kabam is not giving out six-star signature stones anytime soon, especially generics. And so that can be crazy difficult if you don't have the money to spend. Because the only time they're really readily available is for hundreds of dollars on July 4th or Cyber Weekend or maybe the spring cleaning event. But uh, that's about it. Other than that, they're charging 50 bucks a pot for like 20 of them at most. Sometimes $100 for 20 of them. Uh, Corvus, another doesn't need to be awakened, but really does benefit from it. Rank 3, no-brainer. Human Torch, <laughs> Domino. Uh, I, I do feel very um, guilty. I have like six six-star luck guilt because to be able to talk about this and have them on my roster it's just it's just stupid luck you know like there's no reason why i have these good six stars and some people don't it's all rng and somehow i got blessed and some of you might be thinking well that's because you're a youtuber and sometimes i look at the roster and i think well the evidence seems to be pretty clear that 
could be a possibility. Not sure how they would do that, but uh, you never know. I'm not dismissing it 100%. Sunspot, same. Rank 3, Captain Marvel movie. Warlock, we talked about Ghost. Apocalypse, absolutely. Um, now, Venom is an interesting choice. I use Venom a lot more than I thought I would. And now that my six star is awakened, I'm choosing to take him over my 565 five star into Alliance Quest. Now I just do map five. But this week, we're facing off against Mr. Fantastic, and Venom is really good against Mr. Fantastic. So I, um, I'm enjoying that. Red Hulk is a sneaky, um, sneaky good choice to rank up. Now rank three, I don't know. I haven't ranked two, and I love him, even on Awakened. But uh, he's just one of those champions that gets work done. And so many BS nodes, particularly the newer nodes that deal with some incinerate damage that reflects on you, essentially, or that you can gain by attacking the opponent. Red Hulk, of course, absorbs it and actually becomes stronger. So he's incredible. Gambit, the jury's still out on... Like, Gambit and Falcon both, their their PI is good, uh, especially Gambit's. But I just don't know if you're going to really use him... Every day. You want to take up champions. My problem with Ghost is that I really feel like I have to at least bring in Wasp, but especially Wasp and Ant-Man, and that takes up two spots. Whereas if you bring in somebody like Corvus, you don't need any synergy partners for them to be OP. Uh, so that's part of why I love Red Hulk, because he's got a great synergy with Domino, and so that doesn't feel like you're taking up a spot to bring in a synergy champ, because Red Hulk is really good on his own. I'm not saying that Wasp and Ant-Man don't have value, but not compared to some of the other champions you could bring in. Stealth Spidey, I've seen some insane rank 3 uh, gameplay, even unawakened. Uh, Darkhawk is one of those champions, kind of like Gladiator Hulk, where if you asked me a year ago, I'd been like, oh yeah, no brainer, take him to rank 3. But now, if you've got nobody else, especially if your Darkhawk's awakened, I get it, but I just, I don't know anybody that uses a rank 3 Gladiator Hulk or a rank 3 Awakened Darkhawk. And keep in mind that tier 5 class catalyst is so freaking rare that you really don't want to use that item prematurely until you absolutely know you're going to use that champion every day. Because the first question I ask when somebody asks, especially in like a live stream, Prof, should I take this champion to rank 2 or rank 3 as a 6 star? I always say, well, will you use them every day? So in the same discussion, is Mysterio worth it? I don't really know anybody that uses a rank three Mysterio. Maybe, but uh, like if you're talking about overall damage, I would say Havoc, especially for a special three, is a great choice, but I never use my Havoc. So it's hard for me to say definitively. Um, I've seen some good Storm P90X rank three uh, gameplay, so she is a, a good option. Same with Venom the Duck. In fact, we've featured some of that recently. Now, keep in mind I'm filming this at the end of January. So champs like Terax, Mole Man, even Yellow Jacket, Kingpin, they might be options down the road, but at the time of recording this, I will not put any of them in there. Sabretooth, kind of like the champions I've just listed. A year ago, I would have been like, oh yeah, you get six-star Sabretooth, take him straight up, but now, it just depends. If Again, with any of these champions, I say, if you use them every day, take them up. Um, one of the champions that comes to mind that I'm seeing at the next row of this that I just think... <sighs> You know, Hulkbuster hype is, is so real, but I don't like playing with him. I just don't like what I have to do to build him up and make him good, and even like the unblockable specials and what you do with that. I'm just not very good with him. I know some people are amazing, and great for you. You should use him. But I don't think I'd ever take my Hulkbuster up as it stands right now. It's just I use somebody like Warlock way more, and I feel like I always will. So I'm not going to put him in the same rank three discussion that I would those other tech champions even though I know he's buffed and much better. Uh, some of you have told me, in fact, maybe the most pushback I've received on any champion uh, is your love of Mr. Fantastic. Some of you say he is a rank three option for a six star. To me, he's not, but that's just personal preference. Looking down here, the only champion in this row, although I will say for synergy purposes with Apocalypse Cable, certainly is going to be used more than uh, I used to think he would be. Uh, Guardian, if you use him every day, has rank three potential. But I fear people may not, or he might just take too long to ramp up. Um, so out of all these that we're seeing, most of these I say no to. Uh, Sim Supreme and Emma Frost are two champions for your consideration. I do give Emma slightly the edge, 
But I also feel like, especially since I don't have any points in Mystic Dispersion Mastery, that I just don't really ever use Symbiote Supreme, and I feel like it takes a long time to get him initially to his first special three. So, to me, he's kind of overrated for certain fights, but whenever I say that, people get upset. So, I said it, but you might, you know, vehemently disagree. Uh, Sentinel? is a champion that I've seen some crazy good rank 3 gameplay on. So I'm going to put him in that category, though not uh, where Warlock and Ghost and even Guillotine 2099 are. Uh, Kingpin to be announced. Squirrel Girl, maybe, but I would put Hitmonkey over Squirrel Girl for personal preference. Uh, long shot could be, but just like the other champions we've talked about, you need to use him every day. Um, really, even though I love like Luke Cage... I wouldn't put him in the rank three category right now, even Awakened. Wouldn't put Killmonger in that category. Uh, Sasquatch has some diehards. And I have been asked recently, why don't I give Sasquatch more love? Well, he's another champion that I've just never really used. And so if I don't hear too much buzz about him from the community, I just don't talk about him as much. Um, this video is longer than usual and actually longer than I wanted it to be. So we're going to kind of do a speed run on champions. I don't have to end this. Black Widow Clairvoyant, uh, rank three no-brainer. Archangel Awakened, I, it's tough. Everybody always told me, don't take your five-star Archangel to rank five. He's good at rank four. And the argument was true. But then I took him to rank five, and I was like, he's amazing. <laughs> and especially now that he can be a horseman of the apocalypse. If you take Archangel to rank three, uh, as long as he's awakened, I support that decision. But you are going to need to put a certain amount of six stones into him in order to be the most effective. Captain America Infinity War, Awakened, no-brainer at rank three. Colossus, same deal, didn't even need to be Awakened. Cosmic Ghost Rider, also rank three, uh, no-brainer. Cole, I'm on the fence about now. Elsa, I'm on the fence about. Talked about how I like Hitmonkey more than Elsa or Squirrel Girl, personally. Uh, and then I'm, I'm looking down at the rest of these, and I'm saying no to everybody until Magneto. Red Mags, that is. Uh, now, if you want to talk about white mags and alliance war uh, value, I get it, but I'm only putting red mags as the only magneto that I would take to rank three right now. Nick Fury awakened, Omega Red awakened, the dad bod really awakened helps, but I've seen people take him up unawakened and still like what he is. Uh, Professor X is a rank three option, is solid. Uh, Sorcerer Supreme fits in that category as well, and uh, and Thing does not need to be awakened to be a rank three. But you see, I only talked about like maybe 15% of the six stars as just what I call no-brainer rank threes. Most of the champions in here aren't going to be bad champions, but you're just going to use them for arena. And that's great for points, but a lot of people also don't do the arena at all. So just be conscientious of that fact and know that uh, it's, a, it's a topic that has a lot of debate, but at the same time, don't force yourself to take up a King Groot or take up a Psylocke or take up a a venom pull uh, unless you feel like you just have to become Thronebreaker, but I, I don't think it's worth it, even though the daily crystals will, will be worth it in terms of Tier 2 Alpha and Tier 5 Basic. It won't be worth it in terms of Tier 5 Class Callus Fragments. So that's that's my closing argument. Hope this helps. I know it's a longer video than usual, and I still felt like I rushed it, but uh, you know, it's a good starting point for a discussion that hopefully will continue in the comments on this video.